Hey class, we're going to talk about the regions of Texas this week, okay? And this is your textbook, but I'm going to show you how to get there because I don't think that you can get there from Google Class Link, okay? If you try and it doesn't work, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to a new tab and I want you to type in this right here, my.hrw.com and hit return. What it's going to do is going to bring up this page right here. This is where you will enter your username and your password. If you don't remember where the username and password comes from, go back to Google Classroom. All right, go down to important documents. And we had it right here, textbook demo. Okay, you click on this link. And the information's right here, the username and the password. You type this information in right here and you'll be able to log in. Now when you log in, you'll need to you'll need to click on student edition and then it will bring up your textbook. And remember, you can come over here to this tab to the contents. Um, you search, you find chapter three, the regions of Texas. This will, this will be where it begins. And of course, this was also in the technology tutorial video. So if you need a review, you can go look at that. All right, y'all, I had to switch rooms and uh, hopefully the volume is roughly the same. I changed mics too. Anyway, what we're gonna start with is the four major regions of Texas. Now, this is gonna be just a really quick video. I don't want it to be more than about five minutes or so. We're gonna talk about elevation and precipitation and how they are sort of related across the state. We're going to also obviously talk about the four regions of Texas, okay? So the, here are the four regions of Texas. You have the mountains and basins regions over here. You have the, the Great Plains region right here, okay? This is the North Central Plains, and then you have the Coastal Plains. Obviously, the Coastal Plains are on the coast. The Central Plains are more or less center. The Great Plains run through from the Panhandle down through the center half of Texas, and then the mountains and basins, obviously named for their mountains and basins, right? So as you think about this, and we start to talk about precipitation and elevation, right away you guys should, should recognize that if I say, hey, without knowing anything else, which part of the state do you think has the highest elevation, meaning which is the tallest part of the state? Well, this is in the name, mountains. So it stands to reason that the mountains and basins region has the highest elevation, okay? And as you move eastward across Texas towards the coast, right, Gulf of Mexico is down here, then you get closer to sea level. And obviously the closer to sea level you are, the lower your elevation. So this should tell you right away that the coastal plains has the least elevation. So we just learned that the mountains and basins region has the highest elevation and the coastal plains region has the lowest elevation. And when we talk about the four regions, I want you to know that the four regions of Texas also have sub-regions, okay? That means um, they're divided up even more. So we divided the state into four regions and those regions were then subdivided into a couple of different ones. Now, for example, the mountains and basins don't have any sub-regions. It's just the mountains and basins. But if you look at the Great Plains, it's subdivided into two, High Plains and Edwards Plateau. Central Plains is subdivided into three, and then the Coastal Plains is subdivided into five different sub-regions. Okay, just something to note. Now here is a graphic. This is from your book. This is in chapter two, page 21. Right? And you can see exactly what we talked about. So here they're giving you a graphic illustration. So out here in the mountains and basins regions, the highest point in Texas are the Delaware Mountains standing at almost 6,000 feet above sea level. Right? And look at where the lowest point in Texas is. It's Port Arthur. Okay, It's only 10 feet above sea level. And here you can see they've driven, and it's in the, in the coastal plains, They've drawn a line. They show you where the highest elevation is out here near El Paso in the mountains and basins, all the way to the lowest point out here on the coastal plains in Port Arthur. 
right? So this gives you an idea, and they've highlighted a couple cities. Here's Houston, here's Austin, Fredericksburg, which is in central Texas, El Dorado, the Pecos River, the Delaware Mountains, and here's El Paso, right? So keep in mind when we talk about elevation, that the highest elevation is in the mountains and basins region, and the lowest elevation, or that closest to sea level, is along the coast in the coastal region. Right here, we have a map. I'll bring it in a little bit. But you can see we're talking about precipitation, okay? Precipitation is rainfall. So notice that the least amount of rainfall is in where? Mountains and basins, right? Where is the greatest amount of rainfall? It's out here in the coastal plains. And you know this because it's color coded. Right? And here's your key right here. So 8 to 14 inches of rain in the yellow. Look at El Paso. Look at all this in the mountains and basins. Right? And again, as you move eastward across the state, the annual precipitation increases right? until you get all the way out here, right? far east Texas in the coastal plains, where you get upwards of 56 inches of rainfall a year. So that should tell you a couple things. One, it tells you that where the elevation is highest in Texas, out here, the precipitation or annual rainfall is the least. And as you move closer to sea level, right, annual precipitation increases. And so what that should tell you is that it's going to obviously be greener, right? We're going to have more vegetation. We're going to have more trees. We're going to have more tall grasses out here in the coastal plains where it's very wet and you're going to have fewer um, you're going to have fewer options for growing crops out here you're also going to have fewer opportunities to raise cattle and other livestock in the mountains and basin regions one because it's so dry two it doesn't get nearly as much rainfall three it's very difficult because of the because of the lack of rainfall you have to think about how you're going to get water to your crops. So they're going to rely on things like their underground water um, supplies, their aquifers, or their rivers, right? And notice the rivers. Here we have the Rio Grande, and we have the Pecos. Two major rivers, only two in the mountains and basins region. But again, as you move eastward across Texas, look at the number of rivers that pick up, right? We've got the Nueces down here. You've got the Colorado, the Brazos, the Trinity. You've got the Sabine. Guadalupe is over here. They don't show it. You got the Red River up here. So there's a lot more opportunity to water your crops, to water your livestock. And obviously, it's just a lot wetter out here. So I want you to recognize that, right? We're talking about elevation change and annual precipitation. Now, this is chapter three, which covers the four regions and those sub regions. And I'm going to need to correct myself. I misspoke when we looked at that elevation map, and I told you that the Delaware Mountains, but as you read in here, it tells you right here that the Guadalupe Peak, okay, Guadalupe Peak in El Paso in the mountains and basins region, which stands at 8,749 feet above sea level, is the highest point in this subregion and in Texas. Now, what we'll talk about and what you're going to work on today is going to be focused on the mountains and basins region. And uh, I want you to read through some of this chapter, chapter three, skim through parts of chapter two. And as I said, I didn't want to spend too long. I'm going to let you guys go and check out some of the other videos that we have.